College Football 25 is finally here. Let's go, man. After 11 long years, it only made sense to square off all 134 teams in the FBS in imperialism. That's right, in NCAA 14, we went to Mars and went around the globe. Anything can happen in imperialism, and for those that don't know how it works, we start with the map of all 134 teams, spin the wheel of FBS schools to determine the first challenger, which in this case, it's the Ohio State, and spin the arrow to determine which direction they head. In this case, they're challenging the Mountaineers and voila, we're in at Ohio State. The challenger gets home field advantage, and now they will take on the Mountaineers in the first inaugural game of Imperialism College Football 25. It doesn't get better than this. I am so excited for this video and all the bangers right around the corner. So soak it up with King Sponge and hit that subscribe button. Wacky things happen in Imperialism, but in this case, it's anything but wacky. This is what we expect. Ohio State 38, Mountaineers 7. But guys, take over Mountaineer territory. So go ahead and let me know down in the comment section who is going to be the last one standing. Spinning the wheel again. Now on for the second matchup. We're heading to Boston. Let's figure out where the Eagles need to go next. Yeah, no, they can't go up, so we're respinning. Take two, spinning that arrow this time. Take three says go to the left. So this is neat. We'll get to see UMass for the first time. I'm not going to get tired of seeing all these schools and their unique intros. That is one thing that won't go dry. It's a blowout for Boston College. Congrats to BC for getting on the board. Let's get the party started with Virginia. Cavaliers looking to take on Navy. First look at the Cavaliers coming out of the tunnel. Navy hurrying to the line, looking to spike it and get any last second points. I really think this is all in vain because as you can tell, they're down by 19 in Virginia defense, clamps it up. This thing's over. Watch out for Virginia on the rise. Just like that, we're already on to the fourth matchup. It is just getting started, exciting things ahead and nothing more exciting than the worst team in college football. One of my previous imperialisms on the channel, Kent State made a miraculous run. Will they do it again? Well, their test is pit. The flash attack is here in Kent, Ohio big game on their hands. For some reason, it wouldn't let me jump in and slow it down, but we had to see the finale here. Pitt pulls off the miraculous comeback. Kent State had him on the ropes. The controller select button bugged out on me, but no worries. Pitt claims that land, and let's hope that glitch doesn't keep showing up. Next up on the chopping block, we got ourselves a Wisconsin game. Spinning that thing for the one time. The only land north can mean one thing, Golden Gophers. It's the battle for Paul Bunyan's axe right here in Imperialism. And this one just meant so much more for the Badgers as they whoop them 31 to 13. They claim the rivalry game. Okay, Wisconsin, I see you. Next up in the octagon of doom, it looks like Penn State and Mobamba on the clock determining their fate. What should feel like a warm up to them, it's Temple. Another rivalry game, but this one is pretty lopsided. The Penn State Nittany Lions are up 15 overall points. Yet to see any upsets in Imperialism so far, Penn State is no different, taking care of business as they should. 31 to 20, that game down the hatch. Map continues to take shape, but many more games ahead. As P says, let's keep it pushing. And it's gonna be, it looks like Utah Utes. Ready or not, here they come. The newest Big 12 rivalry game and their opponent down south, BYU. It's Utes versus the Cougars. And let's see who comes out on top. This game has been extremely exciting. Down to the wire, fourth and one. Utes going for it, and he doesn't complete it. BYU is on pace to knocking out their rival, the Utes. This is actually an upset, in my opinion. I know anything can go in a rivalry game, but look at the Cougars come in here and get it done. Let's see, is that roughing the punter? Oh man, that's implosion here by the Utes, and that's a game. They just shot themselves right in the foot. It was only a matter of time, but the first major upset comes in the Holy War. Sponge soaking up the wheel one more time. Oregon State beeves in the pack two. Send the fellas to the left, which honestly to the left is the ocean, so it's down a bit. Ducks, Oregon in-state battle. I'd say the beeves were pretty solid last year, but this is a new season, and EA has them at 79 overall. Massive underdogs against the Ducks, who have two of the fastest receivers in the game. So it's gonna be tough stopping those Ducks. Home field advantage kept them in there for a little bit, but Ducks, way too powerful. 52 points, they pulled away at the end. Loki kind of scared for my Broncos because the Ducks are right next door. Matchups continue to come and go. However, the Rams are on the clock. Send in the guys out of Colorado down south. Most direct opponent is out of Colorado Springs, the Air Force Falcons. It's the battle for the Ram Falcon in this.
this one, another rivalry game, another in-conference Mountain West matchup. Rams got the Falcons pinned way back against their own end zone, and on that play, it's fourth down. Ball game on the line here. This crowd is rocking, and it's only a three-point cushion, so if they can manage to get a first down, which they will not, that is a safety or very close to one sack, and it's going to turn over. Defense with the huge play. They're going to take a knee, ice this one out. That is the game. They could have got some insurance points for the funsies, but they chose to be civil. Congrats to the Rams who keep dancing. Wheel says UTSA. Let's get a look at the Roadrunners. It's going to take everything that the Roadrunners got because they have the unfortunate foe of the Longhorns. My Roadrunner friends, I am so sorry. You guys never stood a chance going into the fourth quarter. 47 points here by the Longhorns. Good little last second spurt, but geez Louise. I mean, it was too much and too early. Quick look at the map so far and right back to the spins it is app state first look at the mountaineers in the new game not considering the revamp here they come bring on the niners it's time for mountaineer football it was a nail biter in this one app state barely held on at the end finishing this one off jumping right into the next one man i'm so excited to see who comes out at the end and is it gonna be the virginia tech Hokies? time will tell but their first test the team that borders the most amount of land is the tennis see volunteers cue the inter sandman here come the Hokies and they're ready to take on the Vols they actually have a pretty solid overall so we'll see if the home field advantage is enough to keep them in it student section is coming alive this stadium is buzzing can Nico drive and score for the Vols he throws one out there first down this next play is going to determine a lot and there we go a handoff shows they're ready to settle for three huge first down and some they are in position to win this thing oh shoot we're passing Hold on now. No, no way. An interception. All the balls had to do was chew the rest of the clock and this game would have been over. I was eating my dinner and didn't realize they were gonna sell like that. So hold on now, Hokies, they got this now. It's their game. They won. Unbelievable choke job from Nico. What was he thinking throwing that? And now look, they're eliminated. Hokies are moving on. In the first ever imperialism in college football 25, that is just unacceptable. You've taken yourself out of the race, and now the Blazers got a chance to run this thing. Sending those fellas more down than right, so it's the first time we'll see the tide. I'm excited to see if the Blazers can show up and fight for Alabama today. Let's just say my excitement was short-lived. It's far too late in this one. Roll tide. They're taking it. In my opinion, this many games in, it feels like there are less upsets in NCAA 14. We'll see if Troy has something to say. They're going to have to go down into the left, which puts them smack dab up against South Alabama. Here come the Troy Trojans in the battle for the belt. Will South Alabama have a stake at the title today? It all comes down to this play for the Jaguars. The lefty gunslinger, number seven, dumps it out to his receiver. Number one's taken off. He had a huge play, big conversion. Using the settle for three kickings, no sure thing in this game, but he nails it here to tie it up. OT football was bound to happen at some point in imperialism, but it looks like South Alabama is gonna be the one to force it here. Second and seven, a common theme. Once more, the option, QB keeper. He finds his way to scamper outside in score. So the Alabama Jaguars on the board and it's night night time. How will Troy answer back? Well, that's a good start right through the middle, all the way in, almost in. What a play. Home team definitely not trying to go out sad and that touchdown made it easy peasy on their first OT possession. Converted and got the first down. Now on second and goal, hit their man in the back of the end zone. It's a touchdown. Troy did not get the two point conversion. So it's up to the South Alabama Jaguars to score and win. Can the lefty slinger complete the comeback? He's going for the end zone and he's got his man. Touchdown Jaguars. I thought the two point conversion rule was in triple overtime, but it looks like it also applies to double OT and they win it. Alabama Jaguars knock off Troy. That sends the home fans home unhappy what a battle in the last one and now it's up to colorado and prime time to see if they got what it takes here we go colorado's coming for that big piece of wyoming ralphie is running and the buffaloes are ready to run through some cowboys pause oh my goodness i think they heard me talking smack because wyoming is letting it rain 35 points on the buffs looks like cu's coming back we might have to jump in and yep the sim had him completing the comeback 39 35 
five. Wow, close, but no cigar in what would have been a huge upset. What could have been is no more. Pitt, however, second time out here. Should be their first time at home since the last one was on the road. Put your hands together for the Keystone Classic. Penn State on the road, no problemo. 34 zip in the fourth quarter. Wow, really did them dirty at their home turf. Nittany Lions are not to be messed with. Onward and upward, it is Mississippi State's time to shine. Here they go down south, squaring off against Southern Miss. Here come the Mississippi State Bulldogs taking on the Golden Eagles. And in overtime, unbelievable fashion, they hit the game-winning touchdown. I did not see this coming. It went to OT. And I missed the unpause button before he struck for the six in the air. Here is the replay. Like I said, I missed my reaction and unpausing the recording. But bang, into the corner. That's game. Let's go ahead and chalk up upset number two on the board. Wheel has determined that Miami of Ohio is next. Send in the Hawks to the right. Out come the Red Hawks. It's a Mac showdown between the Bowling Green Falcons and Red Hawks. So it's a bird v. bird. Who's predator? Who's prey in this one? Looks like the Red Hawks are going to soar their way to victory with the final two minutes winding down. Congrats to the Hawks. Keeping things moving back to another Miami team. However, it's the real Miami, Miami. Sending them up north. And well, honestly, that was the only way they could go. So it's FIU. Bring on the Canes. We are out here in Miami. They're holding up the U. Here we go. Miami has a pretty good squad this year, and I think FIU is severely outmatched. We'll see where the sim has it shaping up here as we get closer to the fourth quarter. I'm surprised to see them hanging in there, but the deficit is starting to creep up and quick. Down by 12, down by five. Hold on now. Oh, Nelly might have to start calling them the pesky Panthers if they can complete this comeback because they are moving. They're all out of timeout, so I'm not sure why the AI is not showing any urgency right now. This is crazy. After wasting 10 seconds, now they hurry back to the line to spike it. The lack of urgency plagued a couple teams in my NCAA 14 imperialisms. However, on fourth down, the Panthers, hopefully they can keep swinging and convert right here. He has all day looking for a man. He's got him. Unbelievable. Catching, securing, touchdown. They have the lead with like 10 seconds left. No cap. This is probably the biggest upset of any upset we have had so far in imperialism. Look at all the stars on Miami's offense. It's crazy to me a team this loaded is struggling this bad. Or should I say, hold on now. Oh my gosh. That was almost to the house, but it wasn't. And Panther fans go crazy. Your team's alive. Fireworks in the last one. Will it be fireworks for Georgia State? These cats are heading down south and to the right, which can only mean one thing. They're throwing in the swamp just had one panther team upset a huge opponent will this panther team upset the florida gators this one is going as expected 49 13 going into the fourth quarter make it 56 that was a blowout and i guess one panther team is good enough who's it gonna be up next it looks like we're headed to marshall marshall ready to thunder on up oh boy i hope the herd and their hoofs are sharpened up because they have to thunder their way against ohio state wish them luck they're gonna need it straight up this thing's over before it even began into the second half 44-0 Ohio State had like 20 something overall points on them at least Marshall got a safety they can hang their hat on that but yeah all wraps here folks here comes the James Madison Dukes ready to kick off their imperialism run oh brother so much for a warm-up Ohio State again Buckeyes on a road show right now they're looking to stay perfect three and oh trust me I would love to see an upset but Ohio State is just so much better than teams like JMU unfortunately let's see if we can stay away from Ohio State and get somewhere else it looks like Ball State is on the clock here they go quick map check and matchup inbound it's Ball State versus Purdue. Ball State has to be one of the worst teams I've seen yet at 68 overall. Geesh, this is rough. Their gameplay is just as rough, making a team like Purdue look really good. 35 to 7. It's all over for the Cardinals. Have not had a need to jump in these last few games because they have been blowouts. Maybe Washington State will be different. Send them down into the left to meet their foe, the Oregon Ducks. First look at Washington State running out of the tunnel onto the field in front of a packed crowd. The remaining Pac-2 team, their Oregon State Beebs, their friends got knocked out by these Ducks. Can they avenge them? When the Ducks come marching in, you know it's a scary sight. They're doing it again to another opponent hammering them out of existence imperialism 
moving on for the Ducks. Between the Ducks and the Buckeyes, who do you think has the better chance of winning it all? Just like the Pac-12, the Pac-2 is now defunct and out of the race. So let's see if Cincinnati can keep their race alive. Send them to the right. Bearcats running onto the field versus the Bobcats. So what type of cat is coming out on top? Forget top dog. Who's top cat in this one? Kneeling out the clock. Ohio Bobcats snag this one from the Bearcats. Middle Tennessee's got next. Blue Raiders are headed to the left. Ohio Bobcats surprised me in the last one. Will the Blue Raiders surprise me here against Memphis? Tigers are turned all the way up to an 85 overall. So Blue Raiders got their hands full. Would you believe me if I told you Memphis was up by three touchdowns at one point? Well, no more. Down by six. Middle Tennessee's on the move. Fourth down play. Hey, yo, that defense clamped it up. So Memphis gets the ball back and quickly goes into victory formation. We thought we were on to something in this one. Memphis was this close to dropping the ball. Anyways, here's a look at the teams who remain. When you're squaring off with 134 teams, you just got to start weeding them out. And next on the list is Louisiana. Let's see where the Cajuns want to rage. It's a rivalry game as the Raging Cajuns bust through their banner to enter. It's a Louisiana Tech matchup. So Bulldog Cajuns, who you got? This one should be a barn burner. Usually rivalry games are closer than this. Raging Cajuns wanted no part in this one. They said, let's end it right here, right now. No funny business. Another one bites the dust and onward to New Mexico State, a new team in college football 25. I'm excited to get to these guys home field, but yeah, I don't know how excited they're going to be to face Arizona. Bro, I just feel bad for some of the underdog teams like the Aggies. They're down by a lot against Arizona. I hope they can hang in there. Fingers crossed for the guys. Looks like they're on pace to have a hard time defending the home turf. But anyways, I'm soaking up the presentation and all the little details here in the new game. It is blowing me away. Just like U of A blew away the Aggies, 41-14. Not much of a contest, was it? Another one ends probably the way it should have. So I'll keep it a buck. The Sim is doing a good job representing real life for the most part. You saw the screen. It's Penn State time. Bring on the Mobamba. Ain't no way the team that makes the most sense is the Akron Zips. GG. Why bump Mobamba when you can just bump elevator music? Because we all know who is going to win when Akron comes to town. This is just silly. Silly, embarrassing even. I want to jump in more games, but honestly, it's been a decisive run of late. So many teams we have not seen yet. So let's see if we can get a new one with UCLA. Where is the Cali team headed? This should be a good little in-state showdown. Who wants the victory bell more? It's a rivalry game. It's in-state matchups against the Big Ten Trojans. Okay. Without Caleb Williams, this team looks in trouble. Fourth and seven. Stadium Rock, and it's at the Rose Bowl. Let's keep that in mind. That's pretty cool. And here we go. Drop it back is Moss, number seven. He's got no, does not have a man in and out of the hands. There's victory formation. The Bruins are advancing. Ring in the victory bell. It belongs to UCLA. And they drive Maseratis because the NIL deals hit in. The wheel ticking down. It looks like BYU again. They already upset Utah. What will they do next? With 134 teams, I'm surprised we're hitting a couple dupes already. They defended from the north and now are the aggressor attacking south Arizona State. Forks or Cougs in this one. Here's Cosmo getting his crowd all hyped up. BYU in Provo, Utah. This is a fun place and atmosphere to play. Sun Devils need a rebuild, man. This team is sorry. Getting destroyed out here. Hold the phone. I was just talking smack about Arizona State saying how badly they need to rebuild. And then they answer me by scoring two touchdowns. BYU is looking to come right back down and take the lead they once had. That was a big haul on that last play. Got him into great position. And the running back is just putting his head down and getting to work. Red zone, Cougars. Textbook football in the last couple plays. Kicker nails it. And that's ball game. Sun Devils are out of here. BYU holds on for the win. BYU having a fun little dance so far in the Imperialism Conquest. On to the next. And that is going to be App State again. Are you serious? We got a lot of dupes right now. We've already seen these guys at home. I guess a new opponent this time. There's a huge intersection on the map, but since it's top left left, I'm going to have to give it Virginia Tech. Hokies trying to come into App State and play the spoiler. However, I've seen this team get scrappy and not scrappy enough. Look at the Hokies with a big pick in the red zone here. Can number four take it back? Are you kidding me? That is going to be as improbable of a pick six as I've seen. 14 chasing him down. Oh my goodness. 
see ya. What a play. Shocking. The App State crowd it is silent. You could hear a mouse. You could hear anything. You could hear a cockroach going through the concession stands right now for all I know. Where are the surrender cobras? This thing is over and over and over another interception touchdown i can't believe what i'm seeing virginia tech's got themselves a pretty piece of land that now stretches to the coast what a defensive showing there and it's up to ulm one of the worst teams in the game to try their best practically an underdog in every matchup battle on the bayou is no different they're taking on the cajuns man raging cajuns in this ulm team 60 overall offense help them even playing on their home turf was a disaster embarrassing stuff cage raging cajuns take this rivalry one with ease can't get much worse than that so south alabama again bar was pretty low in that ulm game i think you guys have a better chance evenly matched at 76 overall a piece these two teams are going to be scrapping it out southern miss USA. Golden Eagles already messed up one team's day. They're on the move, looking to do it again. First down, and they have practically 10 yards to go. Unless they cook up the turnover, I don't know. That little pitch to the receiver was a tricky play. First and goal at the one. Watch out for the Golden Eagles. They're scrappy, and they're looking to keep the dream alive. Big touchdown. Three seconds left. Last gasp. He's going nowhere. Safety. Golden Eagles finish this one out with an exclamation. Back to the wheel. Arkansas on deck. The Hogs are headed to the north. In the north, this should be an intriguing one. Razorbacks, Tigers. Here it is. The battle line rivalry. Mizzou, Arkansas. Crowd is getting a rockin' smoke is coming onto the field. Bring on the Razorbacks. Oh man, it's my boy Taylor Green on fourth and goal. I have his signature like right up over there. The ex-Boise State quarterback can be a hero for Arkansas, and he is. Oh my goodness, with no timeouts and barely any time left cashes in and gets the lead over Mizzou. Insane. Sophomore receiver Isaiah snags this one, brings it in, and Mizzou is in danger of losing it. They are 10th in the nation. That's a really good unit. This would be a high quality win. So you're telling me there's a chance. Let's see if this senior group can cook and Boom. Is that Luther Burden? Oh my gosh. That's the man you want to hit. Unfortunately, I don't think there's enough time for them to get a play and a field goal. So they have to go for it all, which they do. And holy moly. And two plays got down to the 15. That's ball game. It's wraps. Arkansas comes away with a crazy win here. Didn't see that one coming. Arkansas fans go crazy. Your team just secured some land and are one step closer in imperialism. That's the chaos we like to see in this tournament. And are you kidding me? What is up with Penn State? They have so many tests. The wheel isn't so certain on them yet. So they hold on here at home against the Terps. It was a rivalry game. They kept it close, but in the end, Penn State proved they were the difference. One after the next, it's onward to San Jose State Spartans. Is your favorite team still in it at this point? Definitely gotta keep watching to see who takes this thing home. San Jose, Fresno State up next. Spartans are battling it out for the Valley Cup against the Bulldogs. They wanted the cup. They really did, but down 10 with no time left. It just leaves for this Hail Mary attempt, which ends up in the hands of a Spartan receiver. I couldn't believe that connected, although time is expired now. What a fun play to go out in imperialism. So you lost. You lost it all, but at least you got that cool play. Let's check that out one more time as he just lobs it up to Justin Lockhart, number 11, somehow through the traffic. It was tipped. I didn't even see that part. It was tipped and it landed in his hands. The fans are too busy celebrating to realize the clock says zero, zero, zero. So for Spartan fans, that is painful. But for UCF fans, it's your time to shine. I like the space you unis, I'm not gonna lie. For the direction the arrow is pointing, it only means one thing, Florida Gators. I think this could be a good game on paper. UCF is a slight underdog at 84 overall, I believe, to Florida's 85. This game was 0-0 at halftime, and it's making for an intriguing finale. Gators down by four, fourth down and four to go. He has all day, he's just surveying and hold on to it way 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 too long ucf drops and big sack defense steps up 
Golden Knights moving on. If you weren't convinced, well, this run will just about do it. That's a big one that tells me UCF ain't playing around. Fair share of action early, and it's going to Memphis at home. Speaking of action, this team's got offense. Will Memphis offense hold up against Vandy, the worst team, one of the worst teams in the SEC? I think it's time to find out. Tigers went and took it 30 to 3. Pound Town, Vandy's out of here. I feel like it's always a big day when you can knock off a power team, even if it's Vandy. Landing on Old Miss. Okay, a good team we get to see. These guys loaded up in the transfer portal. The arrow felt more right than up to me, so it's a premier matchup against Alabama. I wonder if they got the shark mascot in the game, and here we are. Never quit a special intro for the running rebels. Of course, a team like this they'll get the time and resources into the game. I've seen that the intros for a lot of schools that didn't have all the special you know, mascots and entrances, they're just pretty similar across the board. So nice to see some variety in some of the bigger matchups. When number six faces number five, it's bound to be fireworks and someone's got to lose. At a minimum, the Rebels need a field goal, but if they can get more, they'll take more. Alabama's defense all over this one. And the elephant is loving it. They seem to be lacking a little bit of urgency here as the clock winds down to 20 seconds. It really comes down to this big play deflected and broken up. Roll Tide as Bama finishes it off. The victory formation, it's over. They come in and squeak it out 34-31. Even without Nick Saban, I knew Alabama was going to be a tough out. Now, UTEP or Utah State, where it landed, can't say the same. Regardless, they're going to have to go to the left. Squaring them up against Nevada, the Wolfpack, it's a Mountain West Conference game. It should be interesting. Both of these teams are bottom half of the division. But yeah, if I was a betting man, I would have gone with the Aggies and they got a nice 10, 13 point cushion here. It's wraps, Wolfpack fall. Still got a ways to go, but I think the map is looking different than when it first started. North Carolina, Tar Heel time. See what they got up their sleeve. Another rivalry game to look forward to. Tar Heels running onto the field they're taking on their opponent wake forest well as most rivalry games go we got ourselves a good one and the slip screen to the running back gets five getting a first look at potentially drake may's replacement in this upcoming fall season will he be the man for the job and get it done in imperialism 40 seconds to go he's surveying looking and decked down he goes demon deacon defense on him is it a sign 14 seconds left fourth and 14 this is the game on the line it's a fake play action he's got a man over the middle first in goal huge 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 conversion michael jordan went to north carolina and he was clutch can number 14 show a little glimpse of that himself five seconds left any play not in the end zone this game is over and look at the defensive line demon deacons swarming all over him they played hero in the fourth quarter that one was a nail biter down to the wire and it looks like oklahoma sooners new to the sec here we go who do we got today they may be in the same state but tulsa and oklahoma this is not a rivalry game this is just usually domination sooners and Golden Hurricanes about to get after it here. I am literally this close from eating the words I just said, so I'm about ready to redact that. Tulsa out here playing spoiler up by six in Oklahoma. Where was that play going? Fourth and five, dropped turnover, victory formation. Golden Hurricanes just did something insanely special. Congrats to Tulsa, man. They're moving on. I don't, I don't think this stadium knows what just hit them. I thought Tulsa for sure was to be counted out, but that just shows you college football, anything goes. No imperialism's complete without a bit of chaos. One chapter ends and another starts. It is time for Iowa football. Hawkeyes up to the right, which means it's Badger invasion time. They call it the battle for the heartland. It's a rivalry game. Wisconsin is here ready to play. Defense really showed up in this one, and I didn't understand Iowa offense is seriously a problem. They score a couple times, it looked like at the end, but Wisconsin held them to zero points until the last couple minutes of the game. Who's got next? It's one of the Texas schools, this time Texas State, Bobcats on the rise. Where will the Cats go? Talk about must-see TV, am I right? They're going up against UTEP. Miners usually don't have a good time playing up with fully big, rebuilt teams like Texas State, so them hanging around is not really in the equation. Texas State, 
drop them off 33 16. i hope no one had utep as their favorite to win it all because that was further than a long shot than being struck by lightning got the frogs in here arrow sets a square to face off with u of a this big 12 matchup has potential however tcu's fallen off a little bit of a cliff in the last year or so they were just competing for a national championship we're having a rough year last year, so let's see if this game will get them right and towards a good season in the fall. Down by seven, it all comes down to this. Frogs looking for some answers, and the answer is not coming today. U of A drops them off. That's ball game. Team starting to drop like flies. Let's keep it moving with another Utah State matchup. The arrow has determined they'll go up north. Aggies cool and all, but this is the first time we get to see my Boise State Broncos bring them out. There's Genty upset special. Just kidding. It's not really an upset if we win this one, but let's see how the Broncos do. Closer game than I anticipated. However, Boise's running away with it. 26-36. Aggies fall, and yes, they look defeated as they should. These guys got your number, man. Broncos on top. There's Malachi and the boys. If you're watching this far into the video, I guess I can tell you Psst, tomorrow. Dynasty, Boise State, let's go. All of a sudden, Boise's territory has expanded greatly. Out there in the West, the states and surface area are just so much bigger. Shall we hit the wheel again? I think so. UCLA, no, UConn, the new Huskies team. I'm excited to get a peek at that. Will they win? Well, that's up to Army. First look at the Huskies in College Football 25. Live in the next six seconds. I guess that's their little catchphrase. There's Cross and the boys. Okay, will they be able to handle Army? Army. Now, I must admit the odds are stacked against the Huskies right now, but they're going for a good little drive with 30 seconds left. Third and three. They'll need to hurry back up and get a snap off. 11 seconds in a dream. Fourth and three right here, right now. If they can even score, they got to go for two, but they got to at least convert. Intercepted. Army is celebrating and they're throwing up the signal saying, hasta luego. We're taking the sucker. Donovan Platt. DB number 28. We've seen some clutch plays. This is one of them right up there, giving Army another life. Jacksonville State, close to my favorite team, my alma mater, but hey, we'll take the Gamecocks. In fact, sometimes strategically waiting until the end to get called is a good thing in imperialism. Avoiding games can be as sweet as winning them because now Jacksonville State has to take on Memphis. Underdogs, but they got heart. Will Jacksonville State shock the world? Heart can only get you so far, and I guess it doesn't equate to touchdowns because look at the Memphis beatdown in progress. 35-3 at halftime. They're going to keep piling on. 45, 52, maybe 59 if they're feeling it. Eh, maybe not. 52-10 will suffice, and that is a whooping if I've ever seen one. Next up, we have USF, the Bulls, and they are headed to the left and up. The war on I-4 rivalry game. Stadium pulse meter is rocking. USF means business. And UCF driving down the field into the red zone. Transfer quarterback Jefferson looking to be a hero and a strike. He didn't come down with it. I thought he threaded the window. Place is on its feet again. It's busting out here. Number one, what do you got for us? Going to the end zone. Wide open. Toe drag and all. UCF Knights on top. This Bulls team has been rebuilding. The offense is much improved except when I compliment them. They go ahead and throw a huge interception. The Knights DB takes it right back to the goal line. See you later, USF fans. That was a game. Mac McWilliams steps up as a hero. Man, I just love these rivalry games. They have lived up to the hype. Insurance points will go ahead and seal it up the middle. He's got it. Touchdown. The running back plunges forward. What a game. What a rivalry. Let's set up the next one with Northwestern. What team? Wildcats. Here we go. Wildcats facing a familiar foe. They want to trust themselves in this game. Well, Wisconsin is going to be a tough one. Let's see if they can trust in their ability to get it done. Yeah, nah, I didn't expect much different than Wisconsin running over this team. So Northwestern putting up a little valiant effort here. Coming back. Oh my gosh, did they do it? They got so close there. I was just saying they got right down to the goal line. Couldn't finish it off. For those that have been around in NCAA 14 imperialisms, y'all know Wisconsin was cracked on the sim. We'll see if their luck can continue, but onward we have Hawaii finally getting a shot. Out there on an island, Island, there's not many directions they can go and straight down was not one of them so essentially up 
maybe. The best candidate going up and slightly to the left, in my opinion, is UCLA. Here we are on an island thousands of miles away from the shore. We have a good one in store, and this stadium is packed. Dang, bro, you're telling me all these people would be at the stadium rather than the beach? I had a hard time getting the fans in Salona Beach. Home field advantage seems to be the real deal here in Hawaii because they're up by two possessions. UCLA takes a last second lead. Hawaii misses the field goal at the end. I can't believe it. UCLA squeaked it out. Really just a generational choke there from Hawaii, giving up 21 in the fourth. Maybe the next team will have better luck because it's going to be up to South Carolina. Where are the Gamecocks going? To take on Coastal Carolina. However, not at the Teal Field right here in South Carolina. Nick Harbour is a dog, six foot five with 99 speed, and I'm sure he's doing a whole lot to help his team get the win today. They're cruising up against Coastal, no problem problem whatsoever. Unfortunately for some, no teal field in this imperialism since they got eliminated on the road. However, we're going to North Texas. Mean, green, eagles. Baylor fell on hard times, so North Texas might be able to give the Bears a run for their money, but North Texas is not a team that's uh, stacked, I guess you could say. Really not surprised by the outcome I see here. Up by two touchdowns, North Texas in victory formation, takes the final kneel down, and what do you know? Eagles show up to play today. Here's a quick look at the map after a few changes. And as we do in Imperialism, it's right back to the wheel. It's going with Illinois. They have to go to the right, which gets us into a Big Ten matchup, the fight in Illini versus the Hoosiers. This should be an interesting game. Unless Indy Indiana can do something quick, which they score right there. As expected, they ran out of time. Indiana tried in the end, fell short. Anyone else surprised to see Indiana 82 overall? I was. Huskies, it's your turn. Huskies had some drippy uniforms when I saw it in the trailer. And yep, when you have that many borders, it's Wisconsin again. Crowd going crazy up in here. Where are the Huskies? It's time to bring them out. And that statue celebration right there, running out onto the field, good stuff. At this rate, the only team that's going to be celebrating at the end will be the Wisconsin Badgers as they're whooping up on the Huskies. They've been doing that to people lately. It's tough to stop them, huh? Wisconsin is going to keep getting tested as imperialism goes on. For now, we'll turn our attention to Western Kentucky. Love me some big red out there on the football field. But on this map, they got their hands full with Louisville. There he is, the man of the hour, big red out here as Western Kentucky is ready to take the field. Hilltoppers protect the houch. One of the most satisfying things to do in college football is protect the home turf, and that's exactly what the Hilltoppers did in this one, up by 22 on the Cardinals. Louisville knows it's over. They're not even taking timeouts. They're just going to let him run wild as he just breaks through the whole touchdown. That is an emphatic finish to a game where Hilltoppers, it was all big red in the boys. And a laugh from the mascot to send him home. This right here is why I love college football. Sorry, Louisville fans, but the upsets are just so much fun. Time to bang another team out. Let's go with the Ohio State once more. I guess the Buckeyes need another test. The arrow is literally straight down, so I'm not going to choose any of the opponents right on the sides. It has to be Virginia Tech. I may be wrong, but I think this is the first time Ohio State's at home. And actually, now that I see this intro, I'm wrong. I think they played their first game at home as well. Virginia Tech's going to be a tough test. Virginia Tech up by a touchdown, but Will Howard's not finished here. Going across to his man. That's broken up. Big Will ready to try it again. Read option. He's keeping it. Can he fight his way? Oh my goodness. It's the big man reaching down to the one. Here it is, third in goal. What's he gonna do? Over the middle, wide open. Touchdown number four. Is that the freshman, I believe? Super tough atmosphere to play in. It's all knotted up. I wanna see if the Hokies can drive. Third and three, 48 seconds to go. Over the middle, did he hang on? No. I guess that makes sense to punt. I thought for a moment they were gonna go for it, but it is all tied up after all. Ooh, this was tough. I think that would have been a moment where I would have been aggressive and gone for it. They choose to punt. Receiver in motion, massive third down right here they go to that motion man and he's out of here skirt skirt 40 30 20 10 are you serious last second dagger against the Buckeyes it's mayhem Ohio State what just happened absolute crowd stunner Jalen Lane the senior receiver puts them to bed he caught it he got past the defender and it was all over from there he had the speed to burn him down the sidelines, and this is a major, major upset. We're going to remember this one in the Imperialism run. One word, unbelievable. This game was crazy. There it is, the dagger 
if you weren't already convinced. Not every day do you walk into the stadium and upset them. Number two in the nation, this is a very, very tough place to win. Led by none other than Kyron Drones, five TDs. After that doozy, how about a map break? This is where we're shaping up. That's one of the fan favorites, I'm sure, for this imperialism, knocked out just like that. Exciting times as we head to the gray turf. Let me just go ahead and give my condolences now because Eastern Michigan is playing Michigan. The defending national champs make their way over to the gray turf just for a fun little field trip and they're ready to beat down on the Eagles. So I know both these teams are from Michigan, but has this ever happened? I don't know enough of the history here. Have they ever played on the gray turf? Regardless, if they were today, you see the result, 35 to six. Hope you weren't expecting a different outcome because that was a pretty obvious matchup. Buffalo, on the other hand, you kind of know what you're getting to. And in this case, you're gonna have to wish them luck against Syracuse. Ohio State got knocked out. However, transfer quarterback Kyle McCord is at the helm for Syracuse. Will he keep his team's dream alive against Buffalo? Let me go ahead and just answer your question now with the yes sir 42 points to 21 they came in and took care of business back like we never left it is georgia southern on the clock first georgia state got whooped georgia southern are they any different looks like they'll have to prove it against a good team ucf walking into the stadium getting ready for some southern football if they win this they'll claim a good chunk of florida look at everyone just run down here that was a crazy visual i just saw i wanted to jump into this one just to show you how bleak the situation is ucf giving them a whooping 55 to 17 second string defense in there Will the Eagles even snap this ball? That's question number one. Question number two going through my mind is, will they get any garbage time points? Maybe you play college football fantasy. Answer to your question is they don't care. So wait till the last second clock expires and that's game. No offense, but those Georgia schools straight up cheeks in imperialism, of course, besides the dogs, but UCF's on a nice little run. Boston College gets a crack. They won in their earlier slate and they have a really good chance to win again right here. They're playing Army up by two touchdowns. In fact, Army, like many service academies, I believe have a hard time playing at a high tempo when they fall behind they're not in their element clock is ticking army surveying the field the quarterback steps up into pressure down he goes that's a ball game onward looking for our next challenger it is byu they would love to keep their dream alive to me i'd say that diagonal arrow is pointing directly at san diego state aztecs would love to be the one to spoil byu's run it seems like they're at a good clip scoring pretty frequently don't count byu out here as we still got some ball game left except for the last minute they tie it and they take the lead bro for this imperialism you seriously cannot count out the cougars they're looking to do it again Again, and their defense does not hold there. Held on to the grab, first down. Can the Aztecs in Provo make magic happen with 17 seconds left? 11 seconds and one timeout remaining. You need a giant chunk play. Instead, the defensive line hounds him down. Well, rip Aztec fans, BYU does it again. Slapping that circle around again. Who will we land on? FAU, bring on the Owls. The Knights are hands down the most tested team in imperialism right now, and they got the Owls. As they do, Jefferson's kneeling down. They gave the Owls a run and walk away victorious. I guess you really can't be sleeping on UCF in the Big 12 this year. UCLA, again, familiar faces when I know there are more teams we haven't touched yet. You know, I think Fresno State's one of those teams that could hang with UCLA, but only time will tell. Am I right or am I right? This one is a battle. 27 apiece. Number two, Sheds a tackler. He is off to the races, down into the goal line, five yards out. Big run for a big player. Game on the line. Seven seconds to go. They're not messing around. They're kicking their three. And did he just miss that? Are you kidding me? He shanked a 15-something yarder. OT football didn't have to be this way. UCLA sends a receiver in motion, yet he keeps it. Quarterback up the middle, fighting, chugging. Booyah. I know that stadium pulse is rocking. The handoff, money play, down the sideline, diving. Oh my goodness, I thought he had it. Second tries a charm. Here we go. Up the middle, they're in. Mikey rising to the occasion here in the red zone. Found a wide open dude. That's six and easily double overtime rules you gotta go for the two-point play they got it bruins just outside the goal line a little pitch to the receiver make it six now they have to go for two 
biggest play of the game right here, right now. For two, no good, intercepted. The Bulldog DB was all over it, and he has already won the game, and he just wants to go all the way for fun. Crazy, crazy game right here. Dogs on top. To the victor goes the spoils and your next island getaway. They claim Hawaii. Nothing but straight fireworks in the inaugural imperialism. FIU, can they keep their dream alive? This team already showed Miami what's up. Maybe they got more in the tank. If they got anything left in the tank, it's against you already know who, the most played team out there, UCF. Fourth in three, FIU does the fake field goal. Okay, we're going straight up for the win out here. Panthers mean business. That was a crazy look. The defense is still in field goal formation. Are they going to snap this ball or is this just a decoy? I haven't seen that quite yet. They actually snap it and they got a wide open receiver. What a blunder by the UCF defense. What was I looking at? How do you not react to a fake field goal and at least try to change up the defense or take a timeout? I don't know. Bro, in the matter of one imperialism, FIU seriously become a contender for a rebuild coming up. Like these guys are exciting me because they're getting it done against winning teams. Six seconds away from knocking off not only Miami, but UCF. Jefferson wants to go for it all. He has a man. One second and out of bounds. That was clutch. I still can't get over that fake field goal. That was insane. I've never seen anything like it in imperialism. Time's expired. This is the last play. Short, close, but no cigar. Panthers upset the Knights. That is insane. Minus Florida State, who's still yet to play. I would not have believed you if you said FIU was going to be the one running Florida. Ah, oh, man. Hold on to your snacks, man. This is getting good. Liberty Flames. We get to take a look at the new team. What a ride so far. This matchup is no walk in the park for the Flames. They have to take on Virginia Tech. The Hokies have been upsetting people across the nation, including the Ohio State. So uh, let's see how our Flames do. Definitely soaking in the stadium here a bit more. It wasn't an NCAA 14. Tide may be turning on this one. Liberty up by a touchdown. If they nail the field goal, they'll be up by two possessions with 40 seconds to go. Hokies in danger, and that field goal just about seals it. Flames upset special. The map just changed in literally two games. FIU and Liberty stepping up. It's going to be a movie all the way down to the finish, and here we go some Kansas representation. Jayhawks on the clock. And then down to Oklahoma State, it's a Big 12 matchup. On paper, this should be a dogfight. The Jayhawks and their program are on the up and up, and the Cowboys are loaded on their roster with Ollie and Co. Cowboys showed up in Lawrence today, 27-14 going into the fourth. It looks like they're just about sealing it. This experienced team is the real deal. 42-14. Sorry, Jayhawk fans. You guys are one and done. Out the running. Onward to Arkansas. Saw State. Red Wolves in their fountains about to be in action. Here come the Red Wolves taking on Southern Miss, the Golden Eagles looking for some more. Not much spouting today from those waterfalls. The only squirting that's been happening is for Southern Miss. Pause. They've been doing a great job scoring the ball, getting down the field. 37 points. I'm impressed by how they've played in this imperialism. This team still spiking the ball with 45 seconds left is confusing to me as they don't want to give up. Touchdown, pride points. Booyah, number nine got in there. Let's see if them fountains spout on up. Do we still get to see it? Show me the water. Show me the fountains. I'm waiting. Well, maybe they don't spout unless you are winning your game. They already know it's over here. Victory formation and on to the next. Let's see who's got it. LSU Death Valley. This should be a doozy. Tis the nature of the beast. Southern Miss just expanded. Now they got a bigger test. Baton Rouge Death Valley lsu football here they come that iconic entrance we saw in the trailer of course and just a rocking place southern miss the eagles not backing down without a fight but the second half it's been all lsu tigers look at them pull away in decisive fashion 44 24 seriously my hat is off to southern miss for the run let's spin it around and round again to come over to alabama another big boy about to play we just learned about lsu and the tigers well Welcome them back to Alabama. This is not going to be easy. LSU drawing early blood at 27 to 6 going into halftime. This is not the start I expected, especially with Alabama here at home. Smoked 
smoked like a salmon on the grill, bro. That is fried. LSU, talk your talk. That is how you get it done. Fresh to the race, they have two quality wins. Watch out for LSU. Now we get to see Stanford. Where will the Cardinal play? There is that tree. He's dancing away, and I'm surprised that Stanford has an 82 overall in this year's edition. They're taking on Fresno State, who has an 80 overall, which to me, I feel like Fresno State's probably the better squad. But this is exactly why we square them off in imperialism. We let the play do the talking not my opinion Stanford up by a touchdown Fresno State in trouble well dogs fans here it is Bulldogs going for a big one on fourth deflected that's good Stanford defense back there victory formation congratulations to the Cardinal so just in their first game they take all of Cali except for that northern part hope you're all enjoying the run so far it's just getting to the good part Old Dominion shaping it down to the final bunch so it's an imperialism first for both teams, Old Dominion versus East Carolina. Here come Old Dominion. The Monarchs play like a champion today. Let's see if they can hang in there against East Carolina, one of the bottom teams in the FBS. Instead, it's the Pirates showing up Old Dominion in a big way, saying, hey, Monarchs, you guys are one of the worst in the FBS. Hold on to this big L, 44 to 16. Pirates came to town ready to play. Looks like it's going to be Iowa State. Where where will the Cyclones go? Iowa State Cyclones taking on Nebraska Cornhuskers. Two teams yet to play. Someone's going to advance. Someone's going home. No timeouts left. Iowa State moving down the field. Five, four, three, two. Snap it, my friend. Snap it, please. Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize the clock glitch or the clock Miss Q is still in the game, man. That's unfortunate to see. That happened too many times in NCAA 14. Lack of urgency. Really could have snapped it and took a shot to win. In this case, we'll go ahead and congratulate Nebraska as they move one step closer. Wow, what an ending there. And performance from Dylan, the freshman. Western Kentucky back at it. Hilltoppers had a little thing in that first one, but we'll have to see if they can do it again against Liberty. Liberty is tough with it. 33-10 into the fourth. I think the Flames got the Hilltoppers and their number. Congrats to Liberty coming in and getting the work. Round in round it goes. Hey, it looks like Virginia. No, Wake Forest back at it. We saw Wake Forest win one, but not at home. Bring them out. Look at that motorbike. Demon Deacons mean business. They have to take on Clemson, which is is gonna be rough and tough home field advantage kicking into overdrive 27 to 0 going into the fourth unbelievable clemson needs to have a miracle it's not gonna happen demon deacons are you serious that's how you handle clemson man to me that feels like an upset here we go again man it is getting exciting what deja vu the wheel is thinking that could have been a fluke i guess they can seriously shut everyone up if they play ball against georgia am i looking at this right demon deacons are literally up by 10 points on georgia with a minute to go they're trying to move very fast out here Carson Beck in the number one team in college football trying to work some magic as they're on the ropes. Demon Deacon defense is different right now. Say that 10 times fast. Demon Deacon defense different right now. Four Ds, huh? That's a lot of Ds. Georgia settling for a monster field goal with the stadium pulse off the charts. This is not going to be easy. 50 something yards. He actually cashes it. Taking their chances with the onside kick. It's ballsy to say the least, and it didn't pay off. Sound the alarms. This is nuts. Clemson, gone. Georgia, gone. All at the hands of Wake Forest. I must be a fan now or something. Goodness gracious, the upsets are pouring in late. FIU was one of them earlier, but now Wake Forest is deserving a rebuild just on how they're playing in this imperialism. Not going to lie, that's crazy. Georgia was one and done just like that. Back to Arkansas we go. These hogs pulled one out. Can they go again? T minus 55 seconds. Taylor Green and the hogs just handing it off up the middle. He's fourth and two. Practically chew all the clock. Hit a chip shot field goal. You're on your way. Arkansas moving on. We have to see it to completion because maybe Illinois connects on the Hail Mary. They're going for a big one. And heck, they got it. So let's see if anything pedazzle, pizzazzle, wazzazzle. Nope. 
didn't work. Moving forward, it is time for Nebraska to play at home, and they are going to go challenge none other than Wisconsin in the battle for freedom. Looking like all Wisconsin in Nebraska, that's hard to do with this ruckus crowd, and they do it, so Wisconsin hangs in there. Talk about another team just going about their business. Wisconsin came to play. Setting up the next matchup, the circle's getting smaller, and it's Michigan. Defending champs got to go up against their in-state rival Michigan State for the Paul Bunyan Trophy. Looks like the Paul Bunyan Trophy staying with the blue, so Sparty and the guys couldn't get anything mustered up against the national champs. 38-10, that's a wrap. And there is the trophy to show for it. On to the next, it looks like Virginia. It'll be good to see the Cavs in action. Taking on Liberty, who is on a roll of late. This could be the end of the road. It ain't over till it's over. In this case, it is over. How about them flames? Keep on firing it up with UNLV. Let's take a look for the first time. Should be a solid group in the Mountain West this year going up against a surprise team, BYU. Same exact offense, same exact defense. Overall to overall, these two teams are identical. Just want to call out, it's nice not playing in a black void like an NCAA 14 revamp. They got their dome. UNLV dropping a 41-point bomb. BYU, the comeback kids, as you've seen throughout this imperialism, threatening, getting into the red zone making their move once again i don't see much urgency as the clock's ticking down right now there they go hurrying it up probably gonna spike it right here looks like we're going ot byu seriously wasting no time in ot throwing a punch on the first two plays that six how will unlv respond one shot in zone unlv he holds on this is fireworks in ot yo another one play strike from the rebels i look down for a second and they're in gonna have to catch the replay like i said i was looking down and didn't realize our dude just took off all the way with a filthy spin too how did i miss that you have to go for two in double overtime so it's crucial they convert right here and nah byu clamped them so byu can score and go for two to get the win or rebels defense can hold first and goal number three over the middle intercepted unlv spoils the comeback kids in their massive imperialism run i can't believe what a game that was that's seriously just how imperialism works you think you know who's gonna take it until you're wrong literally anyone's ball game still and it's time to see georgia tech send them left and up Yellow Jackets been sneaking their way through this campaign until now. They got Georgia Tech and all their traditions right in this one. And check out the score, 28-10 at half. Will Memphis find a way to come back? And it's not going to happen. They lose to Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, really efficient, really job well done. Really just like that. Memphis, thanks for the mems. On to the next with Colorado State. Here we go little mountain west showdown going colorado state's way goodbye lobos we had a fun one and done would have been cool to see the lobos keep dreaming not this case still a ways to go but colorado school's doing well for themselves right now lsu back to death valley don't know a lot about louisiana traditions but this is the battle for the rag against the green wave tulane was gonna have their hands full especially when the rag is on the line i thought lsu would be in the lead fourth and ten it's no good what a stop turnover on downs two lane takes over now lsu has all their timeouts so it's not over yet but coming into death valley as they are right now impressive worst case scenario definitely burn all the timeouts for lsu and best case scenario is that that should seal it and that it does victory formation two lane finishes it off another upset it's a rivalry game so anything can happen and that was indicative in this one coming into death valley green wave keep on writing upset special the map keeps churning who wants to step on up next toledo welcome to the show take it down to the left against you know none other than notre dame toledo was holding their own for a little bit and there they go again Again, down by seven. Unbelievable on the last play of the game. Holding call cost it for Toledo. Notre Dame wins it. Which brings on the next team. Seriously, Wake Forest again after all they've proven? Job's not finished. It was only a matter of time until the two Cinderella teams of this imperialism run met up. FIU, Wake Forest, fourth and 11. Lefty quarterback going in the opposite direction and dropped the Demon Deacons all over it again, closing this one out. 
Jenkins falls short. Big payday for Wake Forest fans. You now got a lot of Florida to enjoy. Who's got next it is going to be Syracuse. They are headed across the lake to face the defending champs. First time seeing the orange mascot in their dome. Hello there. 24-3 at half spells trouble for the orange. I think Michigan's got this one on lock with their defense. It's GG. Syracuse now out of the way. Are you serious, man? Wake Forest is a hot topic. I only do as the wheel wishes. I don't know what the craziest thing is right now. Wake Forest still dancing or them led by Hank Bachmeyer still dancing. This is nuts. Taking out South Carolina. Impressive again. One heck of a ride happened over there on the East Coast. If there are teams like Texas and Florida State still yet to play, there's one of them, Washington. They'll have to go. That's impossible. Nothing above them. Keep it going. Another spin. They're going to go to the right, which is, you guessed it, none other than a Husky Duck showdown. I hate to be that guy, but the Huskies are on a significant decline after the national championship run, losing all their offensive starters, a couple defenders. I mean, most of their defenders, not just a couple. Good luck against the Ducks. There's the old husk. Dude, I'll happily eat my words when Washington shows up like this. Down to the one. Just got their first down conversion. Taking a knee to finish off the Ducks. They are severely outmatched. I think it's like 10 overall points or so less than the Ducks. And they come out here. Rivalry game show surprising sides. And look at this. Rivalry game show surprising sides to teams. And even in a down year so to speak, for the Huskies. They still give the Ducks more than they can handle. GG. Like, I know the series last year was a movie, but I counted them out this year, and they showed me what's up. Did not see that coming. Oregon Loaded is out of here, and we're on to the Bobcats. Really, anyone's ball game still. Bobcats got a tough one in the Kentucky Wildcats today. Let's see what happens. I'm learning every time I count a team out, they usually show me up, so it wouldn't surprise me if the Bobcats do something big here, and okay, Kentucky denies that. Third and 19 clock is ticking. Need a big one here, not another sack. At least he got it off, which brings up a crucial fourth down. Gotta go for it all, and across the middle, he did get him. Oh, man six seconds let's hurry it up to the line folks and no 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 the ai look it they're just taking the time all the way off game over sad to see this problem still carrying over from 14 here come the pirates and up to the left pirates getting their introduction to the flames it's a trial by fire pirates stand no chance they're getting thrown overboard left and right here come the Flames once again, dude, decisively. I get it's not the hardest matchups yet, but they've won at least four of these games. Just like that, continuing on with Purdue. No, Rice was seriously about to make a comment about the lack of Texas schools right now. Essentially just letting this whole state chill until this game. Here come the Rice Owls out to the blue smoke and fireworks. Love to see it. North Texas traveling a few hours down the road close to the Houston area. They're in Rice and North Texas driving. Here we go. 38 seconds. Strap in. All my Rice fans, how loud does your stadium get? Because you guys need some momentum to stop Mean Green. Chandler Morris leading his team right down into the red zone. Big third in three. He's got it, man. And it's going to be first and goal. Don't write off Mean Green just yet because that touchdown, no. Oh, my goodness. How did he not get in? Now the AI is going to take their sweet freaking time, and this game's over. I thought he scored. Unbelievable. No review, no hustle, nothing. Down to the inches. If not, a missed call, a misfire. Should have been a touchdown. Rice walks away victorious. I am sorry, Mean Green fans. If I were a North Texas Eagle, I'd be livid. Unfortunately, they have to go, but teams like Arkansas continue the ride. This Tom Hogg's going up into the right, which leads to a game with massive land implications. Whoever wins this has the biggest chunk in the United States, and it looks like it's going Wisconsin's way. Little garbage time chuck to the end zone. No good. And just like this fourth down play, time expires, ending the hopes and dreams for the Razorbacks. Wisconsin out here eating good. Now we go back to Oklahoma State and the Cowboys. Who will they play? That's right. My cats are on the clock. They're giving the Cowboys the slight edge, but never say never for the Wildcats. This is the drive right here, right now, if Kansas State wants to win it 
first and 10 across the middle. Number 19 in the nation versus number 18. This is a well-fought game. Whoever comes out on top deserves it. Right now, Kansas State's getting hit with the lack of urgency bug. The clock is ticking, and we gotta hurry up to the line. But oh, you know, casually waiting six, five, four. Are we gonna even be able to spike it? Two, one, we do not. As you can see, this has affected three games now, I believe. But hey, I'll give it to Oklahoma State. Good game. Can't spend time crying over my cats. We gotta go right back to Oklahoma State, I guess. That's funny. Two times, twice as nice. They went ahead and invited their rival to Stillwater. It looks like Texas Tech. Too tough out on the road. A lot of back and forth in the middle of the map. Still looking to crown a winner. We're almost there, getting down to the end. Longhorns. The only one in vicinity of the arrow was Texas State, so I salute our next fallen soldier. Yep, it got interesting at one point, but far too late for the Bobcats. Texas rolling. Taking a look at the Rutgers for the first time. They are going to have to go down into the left. Down into the left, there is a lot of border that intersects with Penn State. Here's a look at the Rutger Scarlet Knights coming out for the first time. Got to bring their A game if they're going to take down Goliath, and you'd love to see it right now. Rutgers up by one. Penn State fourth and 14. Going for a big one. Connects three to the house. A house call was not in the cards the Rutgers were thinking. Stuns the crowd. Oh yeah, they got the two pointer two, flipping over bodies. It's a seven game lead, seven point lead. Rutgers going across the middle and he's intercepted. I was gonna say this is a run heavy team. So to see him pass with such aggression is not very characteristic. Rutgers sealed their fate, unfortunately giving it up in the end. Now it's time for Boston College. We were this close to a Boise State blue football game. Instead, we got Boston College facing Michigan and it turned out to be a pretty good one right now. They're fighting for it. Third and long, massive underdogs Will an imperialism legend be born? They clearly took that personal. Now fourth and 22. Awful, awful call, coach. You just lost against Michigan. What's up with that? That stingy Michigan defense strikes again. And now we'll check out Washington. Big win for this group taking out the Ducks. Now they're going to have to face Cal, which they are putting a number on right this second. Up by 11 going into the fourth quarter. Yep, that's going to be all she wrote. Wait, nope. I was right. That's all she wrote. Washington kept scoring, even though Cal was coming back into it. Take a good gander. Soak up this map. It's crunch time. Next in the crunch, Stanford once more. Cardinal needs to go down to the right. UNLV could not hang in the kitchen with the Cardinal. These Stanford boys were cooking today. 42-13 call it a game. Let's go. That's a lot of land as the West is getting mostly figured out. UNLV is out of the race, but teams like Houston are still yet to go. Time to see what they're made of. It's a bunch of water south of Houston, so we're going to respin. I think the best we can do with that arrow is a matchup against Sam Houston. It's for all the marbles. Houston v. Sam Houston. I guess someone's got to take control of the Houston territory. And was this the outcome you were expecting? Houston is losing to Sam Houston by three three right now. Houston way back here, second and 20 after the holding call across the middle in and out the hands. At this range, you're going to need a kicker with a big leg. So you better get a lot of yards back and why not go for it all? Wow, man. Talk about the ultimate case of settling. They go for three when they had 15 seconds to play with second and goal. Massive third down in overtime for Houston. Will Sam Houston get the stop? Man has all day. Stepping up for the open field tackle and fumble. Bear cat recovery. This is not a drill. Slow and steady wins the race for Sam Houston here as their QB takes off huge carry into about the goal line. Just playing around at this point, either get your six or take the field goal, full take six and ice it out right now. Sam Houston is victorious. Let's go, man. That's insane. Houston doesn't even have bragging rights to their own city. It belongs to Sam Houston now. Next up on our list, Liberty gets a home game. They got a lot of land, so there's a lot of potential and opponents. Definitely subject to how you're interpreting the map, but to me, the most border is at Georgia Tech. Liberty is on top in the fourth quarter, 33-21. Georgia Tech late comeback falls short. 
the flames keep dancing and with dancing comes expansion this time green wave at home they are gonna go on squaring up against the raging cajuns out of louisiana Tulane in trouble by a touchdown hits a big time playmaker number four all the way touchdown with 10 seconds to go ice in his veins shaz preston the sophomore takes it to the house the wave just went for two and did not convert so they're gonna lose i was under the impression tulane was gonna take their point after and go to ot i guess i didn't realize how aggressive they really are because Louisiana's got to pass out of here. Louisiana just took over a good chunk of the Southeast. Shocker, Tulane came up clutch, then fell flat on the two-point conversion, and it's going to give a chance for Western Michigan. No time like the present. Thrust right in there against Notre Dame. I wish you luck. Is that me, or am I smelling a cookout? Notre Dame, 45 going into the fourth. Only 14 for the Broncos. GG, man. It's a wrap. Back to Stanford. They already got a lot of land and Hawaii. Going up and diagonally to the left, a lot of the border touches Boise State, so it's a Stanford Bronco showdown. I have been just waiting patiently to see the blue, and maybe my dream will live another day because we're up by 10. Uh-oh, three. It's getting tight, and we're losing. And what did I just witness? A collapse from Boise State. Stanford still in this. Colossal flop from the Broncos. Broncos, Stanford moves in. Now my alma mater and grad school are eliminated. We're headed back over to Liberty. This team has been taking care of business. Once again, a lot of landmass, a lot of borders, up to interpretation. However, Kentucky is almost engulfed. Liberty could not stand up to Kentucky and they fall 24 to 30. That marks the end of a great run from Liberty. Salute to you guys. Washington on the clock again. Feels like the wheels got favorites. Couple teams deking it out here. Washington, Stanford, had a good run both of them in this imperialism so far kicker has been iced does it make a difference let's see nope huskies on the board they strike in ot denzel boston over the middle gets them the lead how will stanford respond all day just throw it away first and 10 they want to cash in all day to look survey hit a returning receiver stanford's got some tempo to him i'm not gonna lie and that touchdown gets it right back knotted up third and goal up the middle chopped at the legs that holds him to fourth and goal so we hurry up to the line what's it gonna be one yard to go will defense ball out and make a stop they do oh my gosh what an improbable turn of events husky defense baby that should make things pretty easy on this side of the ball don't have to do much forget the three they ice it with a dagger big time ot win six touchdowns from will rogers washington runs the west now we'll have to jump in and check out smu for the first time what's the matchup for the newest acc member raging cajuns having a sneaky imperialism holding smu down right now at the moment however don't count the mustangs out and that's why you don't count them out smu had the comeback for the win here we go florida state finally getting their name called seriously took till about what game 100 cinderella is meeting a roadblock in the way 90 overall florida state this is their time waiting in the wings ready to spring from the shadows here they come hey yo there must be something about this slow mesh offense what in the heck they take care of florida state decisively 34 to 17 this team just keeps on winning and i don't know what it is as you can tell the map's getting pretty serious florida state one and done who would have thought now texas back on the clock longhorn nation got the draw against mean green and in a back and forth battle are able to kneel down and walk away with the win so north texas kept it close but in the end did not matter back at it with smu all the texas schools coming out now first time seeing texas a&m in action and smu might have got a good draw catching them at their home place as they give them the beat down 41 to 14 no need to go into the toughest place to play allen field according to ea sports pushing onward with notre dame irish headed to the left which is across the lake to take on wisconsin the badgers have been on a tear notre dame as tough as always it's gonna be a good one that's for sure when a team tosses aside the badgers like this it has me worried for the rest of the league they did it and 
did it efficiently. That's a big swing for Notre Dame. Inching closer and closer to the championship game, it starts with the defending champs. Will they get knocked off or keep riding? Looks like Penn State will be the judge of that. Michigan 27, Penn State 24. Big catch into the first in goal territory. Here come the Lions. I just knew this was going to be a good one when it's Penn State, Michigan, touchdown. He got it across the line, 44, the big tight end. Tyler Warren hauls it in and knows a body is coming to hit him. It didn't matter. Downside is you left 43 seconds left and Michigan has all their timeouts. Would not be surprised to see Michigan pull something crazy out of their sleeve, honestly. First and 10 once more for number 10. He's got Loveland just skirting his way through. Now out of timeouts, that's good for the Nittany Lions. But what did I say? It just took a few and Michigan was moving. 18 seconds left. What does he have in the tank? Penn State defense, number 11 with the star under his name. Huge sack to finish it off. Hurt the quarterback while he was at it. Look at the Nittany Lion just do his finishing pose. Crazy, number 11 too reminds me of Micah Parsons and that play was filthy. Knocking out Michigan on their home turf. Penn State continues to move up in the world. With the defending champs out of the way, someone will become the new champ. Will it be Tulsa? Surprised they had the win over Oklahoma. Now it's game two. Earning a home game to take on the Mustangs. We should see the Golden Hurricanes give it all they got. Wow, okay, what is up with this unit? 35-17 going into the fourth. SMU making a comeback 22 unanswered in the fourth quarter alone Mustangs do not want to go down Tulsa however trying to get into the red zone running out of chances seven seconds left third and ten going towards the end zone what a snag two seconds left in a timeout this is it one moment one opportunity your best play right here right now golden hurricanes going for it all he's got him in the corner touchdown as time expires SMU knocked off off the map it's mayhem up in here tulsa survives and upsets another team that was a snag in the corner by anthony watkins what a day make it six touchdowns for the freshman francis once again not what i expected but i'm here for it here comes wake forest not satisfied yet they want more more wake forest border is hitting kentucky than duke so it's gonna be kentucky this won't be the first time kentucky upsets a cinderella team they knocked out liberty and now they're knocking out wake forest after long last i can't believe it who are these guys and with that last one duke is surrounded by a sea of kentucky fans next up back to the longhorns this time texas up north means a hoedown showdown against the arizona wildcats scary hours up in here arizona stood no chance longhorns move it another one hits the ground Notre Dame looking to improve. Here come the Irish. Okay, the team that's most up and to the left that borders Notre Dame is Purdue. Battle for the Shalele Trophy. Notre Dame wants it more than Purdue. 28, I should say 34-10. It's over. 41, rack them up. So yes, you still get blowouts this late into imperialism. Duke, no, Kennesaw State gets their first shot. They've been hanging out for a while now. Holy L, how did I go this far not realizing Kennesaw State did not have a spot on the map? That's an L. All right, let's be real. Kennesaw State was not going to give many teams, if any, a run for their money. However, I will go ahead and honor it and have them go up against Tulsa since that's about where they would have been located in Georgia. Like I said, Kennesaw State probably would have been ran through a lot sooner. Unfortunately, I missed that on the map, so that's my bad for the Owls. However, the good news is they're in this late in the game, so maybe they pull off some upsets and make a run. Tulsa has been a team destined for greatness on this run. They tie it up with Kennesaw State, go for the game-winning field goal, and knocks it through. So Kennesaw State put up a fight, tied it up at the end, but wasn't enough to knock off the Golden Hurricanes. So, yep, no map movement, just the blunder on my part. Hopefully that was the only mistake I made. Colorado's on there and primetime's ready to keep winning. Might have to make it up to Owl fans a bit later in another video, but for now, Colorado is squaring off with Washington for all the West Coast. There is history between these two teams that used to play in the Pac-12. Up by 10, CU holds Washington to only three points in this game. That's crazy. Congrats to the Buffs. They're one step closer. Let's check out Central Michigan for once. Chippewas, what you got? Oh no. First game game of imperialism it's against notre dame so wish you guys luck 
I'm confident that the sim is going to be in Notre Dame's favor. If anything crazy happens for Central Michigan, consider it a miracle because Notre Dame's not going to stop scoring in this one at all. At least they tried, and Texas Tech is ready to try their luck. Red Raiders in that flying offense going south. Battle for the Chancellor's Spurs, I believe. They're playing the Longhorns. It's a rivalry game. Anything goes. Low scoring at first before the Texas Longhorns took off. That rivalry game comes to an end. Texas doing their thing. Map is shaping up closer to its final state. Almost down to the final 10. Miami, Ohio has been hiding in there. Will they break out? The waters around them are full of sharks. And Penn State is another great white lurking in the depths, ready to strike. But Miami University, the Red Hawks, manned up in this game, defended the home turf and said, I don't care if you're a great white, we're a megalodon and we're taking you out. Penn State knocked on out of here. Talk about a major upset. I don't see it lasting very long with guys like Notre Dame and Kentucky around them. The final mile begins with NC State. These are the last 12 teams. And remember, in real life, 12 teams make the playoffs. So this would be a look at your field. NC State is at home playing their first game, I believe. There's no better time like now with 12 teams left. Wolfpack going to work, exposing Kentucky. They were shutting them out for the longest time. Fourth quarter came, and that is it, 34-14. What did I say in the beginning? Sometimes the opportunists are the ones that swoop in in the finale. And believe it or not, a couple teams are still yet to play, even on this list. One of those looks like the next matchup. Heading left, Notre Dame has a big border, yes, but we can't forget the man that is swallowed up by us, Duke. Even though Duke just scored here towards the end, there's something in the air with this NC State team. 53 points, it's over. Started with 100. 134 teams and then there were only 10 that remained auburn welcome to the show watch out for the war eagle here comes the last team that is yet to play in an imperialism matchup here they are at home there's the eagle flying this should be a good one auburn tulsa am i right tulsa on a magical run will they continue well auburn went ahead and exposed tulsa beat them by a touchdown here at the end I did not see that comeback coming. Look at the 14 points in the fourth. Beat them by seven. Bro, that Tulsa team was something special. I appreciate the times we had. Okay, I know I'm sleepy and all, but why is Rice still on this list? I just checked back at the map. They're not there. I know for a fact they were there earlier. I don't think Rice is supposed to be here anymore. And if I mess that up, that's my bad. I'll have to get them right. Notre Dame is on the clock. Let's go ahead and see if the Irish can keep the dream alive. Largest border space means NC State. Notre Dame continued dominance is the story in this one. 36-17. Wow, NC State had me there for a moment, but now Notre Dame spans a huge piece of America. Getting down to the wire, a Colorado school is representing. Here come the Rams. Before halftime, you could tell this one was wraps. 45-27, long horns on a roll hook em horns man these guys are gonna be tough to take down soak it up the final six in the inaugural 134 team college football imperialism sam houston in miami of ohio still sneaking their way through it's up to texas to knock one of them out don't want to see it but it looks like they live another day most directly up north is either cu or notre dame but there was a slight push to the right so i'm gonna have to go with notre dame it's official notre dame is the team to beat 34 14 make it 41 21 at the end irish destroyed texas at their home turf that's crazy so notre dame is definitely the best team left in the field as notre dame expands greatly i'm still fingers crossed holding on to hope for miami of ohio or sam houston although it's very very unlikely it just feels like the sim is less rewarding of an upset than ncaa 14 so it's going to be a whole lot harder speaking of one of those teams miami of ohio practically needs to upset everyone on their way to victory starting with none other than notre dame nothing is impossible and at least they have home field advantage i can't make this up 35 apiece with a minute left in the game unfortunately Unfortunately, the Red Hawks are punting it back to the Irish. It's going to take a tough defensive stand to get that ball. Here come the Irish dropping back, going deep. Big shot. Got his man. One play touchdown. That was way too easy. Well, Red Hawks, you got 35 seconds. And I'm kidding. You just threw a pick six. So in the blink of an eye, your hopes and dreams crushed. Xavier Watts 
finishes you off. Devastating loss in the last minute there for the Red Hawks. Now Sam Houston, the other underdog, has a chance to shine. Sam Houston has to play up into the left, which I believe is going to have to be Notre Dame again. Actually, in this case, Auburn makes the most sense. These cats showed up when it mattered most in the battle for Houston. Now it's time to show up again in the final four. Auburn is here to play. A Bearcat could dream, but Auburn was here to be the dream crusher. Sam Houston falls 38-18. Definitely felt like the long shot outliers were not going to last. We have three teams remaining, Auburn, Colorado, Notre Dame. And the last team before the championship starts with Auburn. I clearly don't even need to spin the arrow because every border is surrounded by Notre Dame, meaning Colorado's locked a bid in the final game. It's just a matter of is it against Auburn or Notre Dame? Right now it's tight, a touchdown cushion all tied up. Auburn fans need to get loud or quiet, I should say. They're working on offense. One play for the win. He needs to throw one up and out of there, man. Notre Dame just swallowed him up. Notre Dame is seriously on an unprecedented run right now, knocking everyone off. It's going to be Notre Dame see you in the championship game. Who gets home field advantage? It seriously comes down all to this. Colorado is your home team. Blood, sweat, 134 FBS teams, and we have a final championship matchup. We are about to find out if primetime is about it. Colorado has made it this far, running the West and having a nice slate of matchups. Notre Dame has brute forced their way to this point, so it is going to be a showdown for the ages. Colorado's got the offensive weapons, and Notre Dame has the defense weapons, so it's a classic case, offense versus defense. We worked this hard and this far. It's only fitting we just watched the fourth quarter play out. This will be for the ages right here the first ever college football 25 imperialism and notre dame has two minutes 40 seconds to work they're down by two possessions good sign is they have the ball and let's see what they can do second and 11 number 13 dropping back going across the middle that's riley leonard with the first down pass two minute warning notre dame feeling the pressure to pick up the pace and that strike will get them right down the field here we go. Irish have to work and fast. They have to get a score here or it's over. Leonard's taking off using his legs. That's got to be a flag for hitting the quarterback, right? Ridley has to keep it pumping. A minute to go across the middle. Touchdown Irish. They're right back into this thing. Only down by five. Chris Mitchell doesn't want his season to end like this after all the work he's put in. Onside kick. This is a huge moment of the game. It's off the CU to what i don't even know what to say that was making me like speechless it went off his helmet into his teammates hands who did recover now shader sanders and the running game should be able to ice this one out as long as they get a first that is a big if i must caveat because now look it's third and ten shader opting to go into victory formation not a bad idea just to chew out whatever clock you can with essentially no time left they're punting it and Notre Dame might have one to two Hail Marys. With Colorado's defense not being elite besides Travis Hunter, I wouldn't feel too comfortable, but I'll just go ahead and redact what I just said. Defensive line ices this thing out. That was a huge play, a national championship ceiling play. The Colorado Buffaloes are victorious in college football 25, 134 team imperialism. I'm surprised they made it this far. I'm really not going to lie. I thought they were going to get knocked off by quite a few other quality teams, but let's just say they had some help with their friends along the way. Some big upsets from teams like Wake Forest, Southern Miss, FIU. It got a little wacky. But in the end, it's all about the team that can reap the most benefit, be opportunistic, and it happened to be CU. So congrats to these guys. Shadur did just enough, even at the 47% passing completion. There she is, the victor conquering all of the United States after long last. This took so many hours and a lot of games. I hope you really enjoyed this. And if you did, soak it up with King Sponge, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one as soon as tomorrow with more College Football 25.